buying a car or selling a car. If you're not in the know, you could get ripped off. But in my showroom, I reveal the secrets of the car trade to help you choose the right motor and solve those motoring dilemmas. And in the workshop, Ed will show you how to save a fortune on those repair bills and get your car shifted. You'll even learn how to spot a lemon and avoid those dodgy motors. Welcome to Auto Trader. In the showroom today, we've got a drumming legend, Rick Buckler, who used to be in the jammies back on the road. His dilemma is he's got a huge drum kit, a family and band members, so he's after me sorting him out with one of these gigantic MPVs. I've got a chap coming down called Mike who's got a classic little Porsche 924 for sale. It should be ringing the phone off the hook, but for some reason there's something wrong with the car or perhaps he's just not selling it properly. Either way, I'm going to help him shift it. Now, in Spot the Lemon, where I challenge you to tell me what's wrong with a particular motor, I've got a little car that was once stolen. I've got a fella called Paul coming down to the show who reckons he can spot a dodgy motor a mile off. Thing is, will he spot the lemon in this one? Well, we're going to find out. Come on then, Ed, let's get to work. It's amazing the people that pop into the showroom. We've got a real icon with us today. It's none other than Rick Buckler right, from the Jam, the drummer, and he's joined by Russell Hastings. Oh, How are you, chaps? Good. Fine, yeah. Now, you've got a real motoring dilemma. Yeah, I can't get the kit in my car, so I've got to do something about that. It's great for the family, but it's, uh, it's no good for the drum kit. And your car at the moment is a Mercedes? Yeah, it's a Mercedes 230. So you've got a family and you've got a drum kit. And you've got a saloon car. It's like a the family's got to go. It, the family's yeah. got to go. Oh, yeah, it's a square peg round hole yeah. situation, isn't it? How much money you got to spend? Oh, about thirteen. About thirteen grand. Yeah. Well, I've got a whole range of what I think are the best MPVs out there in the market at the moment, and we're going to have a good look round them. Rick has already made one good move by bringing his best mate Russell along. He's made sure he's got an independent second opinion to stop him from getting carried away and buying the wrong car. Their new band is called The Gift, so let's see if I've got a gift for solving his motoring dilemma. I've chosen four big MPVs, all with three rows of seats, tons of space and strong diesel engines. Peugeot and Citroen produce the 807 and the C8. They're basically the same car, and both offer comfortable rides with loads of gadgets, and a good value when bought second hand. The Seat Alhambra comes from the Volkswagen family, and is the classiest of the group, but comes with a higher price to match. I'm keen to see how this will stand up against a bargain of the group, the Kia Sedona. It's the biggest car here and represents the best buy for anyone who can put value for money beyond bad snobbery. Right then, lads, the first car I'm going to show you is this. It's the smallest car in the showroom, funny enough, but the most expensive. It's the Seat Alhambra. It's a £1,000 more than you wanted to spend, but you might find that extra grand when you hear how reliable and practical this car is. The reliability comes from the fact that they're built under the Volkswagen umbrella and they have been for years. What do you think? Yeah, if we can get the kit in it, then we'll certainly have a look at it. Good. And what about the style and image? Yeah, it's not so important, though. I mean, it's, it's really functionality. It's got to be able to do what it says, get the kit in, get the family in, we'll be all right. Right, cool. Let's have a look in the boot. Have a look. Now, the good thing about the back of the Sat Lambra is you've got this big, wide open area. And the good news is you can remove one seat or you can remove all the seats. Now, we've got some of your drum kit over here. It's a big, big bass drum. How many bits of this have we got? About seven or eight piece. So I don't think there's going to be enough room. But that's OK. Once we get all the seats out, we can certainly get all of this in then, can't we? You'll have to take all the seats out, though, to do it. Yeah. yeah then means... you're not going to get anybody else in it, then. Oh, no. of course not. No. <laughs> all right, don't worry about it. We'll discount it. Let's move on to the next one. I'm going to leave the boys to have a nose round at my next recommendations, the Peugeot and Citroen Duo, because I want to check out this sad-looking Porsche 924 that's just come in on the back of a trailer. I already know its owner, Mikey Barr, has tried to sell it, but unsurprisingly, he's had no takers. If he's going to get it shifted, he'll need to be told a few home truths. Ed? All right. This is Mike. He owns the Porsche 924. Good of you to join us. Now, Mike can't shift his car. Why? I have to say, I'm not even slightly surprised you can't shift this motor. You've done no preparation whatsoever. First of all, dodgy old paintwork. You see how flat that is? That should be lovely, clean and shiny, and it's not. Next thing, the tyres are flat. How do you expect the thing to go anywhere at all? Battery is missing. You can't even start it up and take it for a drive. That's never going to work. And then inside, you've got that bad old steering wheel and gear knob. Those are things people touch. They have to be in good condition, and they're rubbish. You're just giving me a whole load of work to sort out here. 
In its current state, this car's worth about a grand, but I reckon a hundred quid or so spent tidying this porker up, plus some elbow grease, could probably double its value and get it shifted quickly.